Since this sketchbook is finally complete, it's time yet again for another sketchbook tour. In this video, I'm gonna share the inside look of this most recent sketchbook I finished. Crazy to say it's been over a dozen now, but let's jump right into it. I began this sketchbook in October of 2023 and just finished it of March 2024, so around five months, but still working in other sketchbooks simultaneously. On this front cover, I drew all my favorite art supplies that I plan on using in this sketchbook because I find the paper is perfect for it. I like that they're all scattered across the page, a classic black and white ink opening spread. In the end of October, right around my birthday, I had an opportunity to commemorate something special. Check, check, check. My first ever live public speaking event. First time meeting you guys in person and just interacting, learning from one another. An unforgettable trip across the country. After the demo was over, I made a random post and invited anybody to come sketch with me. So we sat right in front of the convention center. Everyone drew what caught their eye. It was super chill and we just had a lot of fun capturing the moment. There was something so special about connecting with everyone in person. And we're gonna have to do it again and again, but this time in Europe. I'm really excited to host this art retreat. And that trip info is coming shortly. While I was out in California, I visited the Huntington Library Art Museum and Botanical Garden, which was absolutely incredible. They had these large figural urns in the garden, which are basically large vases and oh my gosh, they immediately caught my eye. To me, it felt like each one had a story to tell, and I just wanted to capture every detail and draw each one of them. I loved it so much here that I came back three times throughout my trip, so if you're in the area, I definitely recommend it. This spread was done right on location in Universal Studios. I wanted to challenge myself to capture walking people as quickly as possible. This was actually Halloween night where everybody came out in their costumes. There were a ton of people and it was so much fun just people watching and observing. This one was definitely a lot of fun. On the next spread was another day in the botanical garden and it was also my first day trying ramen. Yep, I fell in love. Here were some people I saw at the restaurant, a mother, her son, and the father. And the drawing on the right was the Chinese garden in the botanical garden. I spent all day here that day and I just could not stop drawing. It was absolutely beautiful. On this page are some ink drawings of some friends that helped me film throughout the event in California. It started with one drawing, but I quite loved the composition. And on the bottom, I saw the sculpture at the garden, so I also added it towards this page. And I wrote a little excerpt in my own words of just how it made me feel. I've definitely found that the consistency of this paper is excellent for ink. It's pretty smooth and I like the slight cream colored paper. On this spread, I drew a bunch of dancers and how their energies intertwine with these little marks that I made with the brush pen, almost leaving them in a silhouette as one to convey movement. Here I explored portraits, but in the new pens that I got that were also ink, but in color, I tried to layer different colors to see the different illusions I can get. This was my first time using these specific pens, so I was just playing around here. Here I started with pinks and a bunch of purples, and over here I decided to try just blue. I have an ongoing series going, so here were some studies on the style that I wanted to go for for this particular drawing of Fish Grants a Wish. I made my own prompts with animals that rhyme and I'm still working on it and I'm just experimenting and exploring character design through these. So you'll see that little thumbnail of the fish down there and that's exactly the finished piece that I went for, which is all happening in graphite.
Every year I like to do a self-portrait. Here I explored a watercolor pencil in red. And if you're curious to see the process on it, I have a video up on my channel. I currently live by the ocean, so anytime I need a moment to relax by the sea, I take a nice stroll and sometimes I still can't resist the sketch. Personally, portraits for me are super fun. I love getting to draw super interesting features, challenging myself on how I can push the expression. So on this page are a bunch of little studies on that. I've also been loving mixing typography into my drawings too. But if you've been watching the channel, you may already know that. I love how this guy came out and there was a red spill from the other page, but it kind of made it convenient for the ear. So I thought about it and I never do drawings from a bird's eye view from the top. So here are a bunch of graphite drawings exploring people walking or standing or sitting, but a view from above. Except this little guy reading a book and having all of those ideas, stories exploding onto the page. It was also a lot of fun to explore a red background against graphite. Here are a bunch of bird studies from a book I have on birds. Almost all the time, my favorite way of learning something is by drawing it. Here's one of my favorite little birds. And I don't know, I just find them so beautiful. These were some studies for a reindeer painting idea I had, and I do more exploring of that further in the sketchbook. On this page, some ballpoint pen sketches. One thing I have to note is that I'm really glad I've been making more time to explore different color palettes that match black too. Sometimes when I don't really know what to draw, I start doodling and drawing random objects around me, so this page is literally the explosion of that. This is a portrait from imagination and just a bunch of things that I was feeling in the moment. Just allowing yourself to express yourself without any expectation is always a great thing. One of my all-time favorite subjects to study are eyes. So on this page, I explored it all with a color I don't normally grab, and it felt like it's been a quick minute since I drew some eyes, so I definitely was very happy once I finished the spread. Pick a subject you love, and I promise it'll feel good when you draw it. One day, I was reorganizing my art supplies in my studio, and I found this 10-in-1 colored pen. I got it from the dollar store for under $2. I made a video about it too, but you already know I love ballpoint pens, so I figured I'd try to use that pen on this spread. This was one of those situations where you wake up in the middle of the night and you have this random idea, and you just gotta try it. So I started exploring little thumbnails of this portrait and different angles of the head, but I don't really think I was liking it, and then I just kind of scratched it and made this portrait instead. Sometimes not all ideas make it right away, but more so become stepping stones for more revelations. And here it was to try a really flat black background against graphite. On the next page, these were my planning sketches for an illustration I titled Momentous Miracle. I began with some words to help back up the concept, then I did a sketch, a value study, and a color comp. So before the finished painting, it all began in the sketchbook. This was a mixed media piece with gouache, colored pencil, watercolor. I shared a very in-depth process on this in a video, I'll have it linked. And the beautiful Gicle prints have finally arrived. I've been signing them, and while I show you guys these, a quick word from our sponsors, Squarespace. Currently, I'm managing my shop and my online business through Squarespace. This all-in-one platform allows me to both upload my sketchbook spreads and also my portfolio. My favorite part is how beautifully displayed their award-winning templates make everything look and also how user-friendly everything is. 
Once I'm ready to launch a new print, I just drag and drop and create a new product. Uploading close-ups, editing in text literally takes seconds. This is also really the all-in-one place for me, for you guys too, because my sketchbooks are there and I even now have uploaded links to some tutorials from Patreon. It holds it all for me and you can also give it a try by going to squarespace.com for your free trial and when you're ready to launch go to squarespace.com forward slash just carp for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Although this is relatively recent it's still super cool to look back at the process and also share it with you. Here's some gesture drawing practice, some two minute poses and five minute pose. I share a few tips on these in the next following pages in this video up top. And I also have a few videos if you want to practice gesture drawing with me and follow along. Sometimes drawing from imagination and just letting your hand go all over the paper, whatever you feel like doing in the moment, feels the most freeing and something that I highly recommend. Just ride it out. On this spread, I was trying out this new red slash coral pencil and I'm realizing a sudden red theme going on in the sketchbook. <laughs> I did these little drawings and then I added a bit of red and abstract shapes and to contrast it a little bit, some blues. Not much thought here, more doing and just letting your hand free. I came across this fine liner that had double point uh, orange and blue tip and when you draw a line it actually does a double line which gives you this illusion as if you're wearing 3D glasses. I'm actually really proud of these fashion sketches, I think they're quite successful in terms of anatomy and I'll definitely be exploring this pen some more. Upon reflecting I'm really happy with the line quality and I'm always a big fan of the way blue and orange looks together. Here are studies of two male hands and two female hands. I really wanted to explore the different energies between masculine and feminine and sort of have them interacting with one another in a way. But to be honest, that happened by accident after I drew them and realized they sort of do look like they're interacting with one another. Although I did my 100 hands challenge, I still feel like I want to do it again. Sometimes I really enjoy just cutting out a piece of construction paper and drawing over it. Here's a little chilling meditation frog. And over on the right, just another version of something in red, I guess. It's really interesting how different colors bring out a completely different mood in a piece. That's definitely something I've been pondering about and paying more close attention to. I've always loved the Renaissance paintings of angels and I just wanted to do a little study of one and I had a lot of fun drawing this. This mostly came from imagination which surprised me that I was able to do that and I just found some references for the wings and the hairstyle when I reached a point like I didn't know what something looked like. Some more studies in a little bit of pink. I've recently been resetting up my art table with all the supplies just on the table itself and it's been actually amazing and I start grabbing new things that used to live in jars but now sit on the desk. Another page with a bunch of random things combined. This one was funny, I was on the phone with a friend and I was like what should I draw? And She was just saying random things to draw and I was putting them right on the paper. I play this game quite often with some friends. These were just some palm trees I saw while waiting for the bus a random nose study, and a few other portraits with random shapes and things. Sometimes random things do work together. I also had fun mixing gouache in the background of the portraits as well. From time to time, I like to just get myself some flowers. I love tulips. And this particular morning, I happened to wake up super early, I was having my cappuccino, I was itching to draw, and I just looked at the tulips in front of me and captured them here. Sometimes it's great to get out of the house and just go for dinner, on your own even, and my sketchbook came with me of course. I distinctly remember a couple having a conversation and I loved that they were not on their phones. And there was also a man right next to me reading a newspaper, which you also don't normally see nowadays. So I'm really grateful I got to capture this moment in my sketchbook. 
From a distance, there were all these little sauces and I just had so much fun drawing these details too. I really love the way this ink drawing came out of a bride and on the left, just a line drawing of a sculpture. On this page is just an action drawing. I've always loved archery and lately I've been feeling very strong, determined and just ready to tackle anything. And I truly believe that anything is possible. So I wanted to add a little bit of text there. I think there's something so exquisite with a picture and a word combined together and the power it can have. I was passing through a large plaza that had a casino and I was waiting for a friend. So I did this quick drawing here and then explored some black shapes and silhouettes for the two girls over on the right. I'm learning that some drawings become more stronger when you have a clear black colored in shape. Here's another drawing from observation of a time I was at dinner I saw a girl with her mom and her grandma just enjoying a beautiful meal. It seemed as though they were celebrating something and I just found it super sweet that they were together in that moment and I decided to capture it. Trying out a completely different color scheme now here with some purples and greens. Some fashion drawings and marker where I tried pushing out different shapes. And actually while I was drawing the last sketch, I was about to color it in in marker, but I loved how it looked alone with just pencil. So I just left it like that. On this page, I used ballpoint pen to create some sketches. We got a little tiger, a portrait that I started in blue ballpoint pen, and then I added some markers in the back. I think ballpoint pens are one of the most versatile mediums you can ever have. You can just use it for so many things. And over on the left, explored Tilda as a character. On this spread was a scribble Sunday I did with my patrons where we went on live on Zoom. I have this new flower book and we were just flipping to random pages and drawing the florals. I love holding these live and drawing with everybody online is just always a pleasure. And a huge shout out to my amazing patrons. These five portraits were something that I didn't expect to turn out as great as they did. I'm quite proud of them and I feel like there's a lot of progress here because I consciously set an intention and I shared five tips of these in a video with you guys. You seem to love it, so thank you all for the amazing feedback on this one. Here, I walked over to the beach to sit by the ocean and I observed these two people who were just reading a book and I began just using more of the brush pen. I feel like it allows you to draw a bit quicker and capture the moment faster. And sometimes it's really all you need. On the next page were the new designs for March Patreon mail. If you don't already know, I send out monthly happy mail in an envelope. Here I was inspired by the little sweet heart candies. And if you're signed up on Patreon for those tiers, you get an exclusive design printed and sent right to your home. I package these up with love myself every month and send them out. And I do a new design every month, which is awesome. And most of them come high resolution scans right out of my sketchbook. I taped in the sticker just so you could reveal the sketch right under. I thought that was kind of cute. Here I explored something completely out of my comfort zone, which was just a complete line drawing, a thin one, and a little bit of a lavender background. Sometimes the hardest thing is to simplify, but that was a beautiful little exercise for that. We all go through periods of change, new beginnings, old endings. I usually like to create in the morning, but I was so inspired to create at night this time and I was just sitting and pondering about this and I've been allowing whatever thoughts come up in my mind to just be revealed in the sketchbook. Sometimes I paint things to remind myself, like this one here.
And to be truthful, your sketchbook is a pretty vulnerable place. To me, it's my most safest, my most happiest place. And it's quite intimate sharing it sometimes. But you never know who you could inspire that one day and how many people out there you can help. On this spread is a fresh start to get ideas rolling for a very special big project coming on on YouTube. A new big artist's YouTube collab. Check out 1000's channel for the amazing announcement video. 10 artists from around the world are coming together to do a big mural battle. We're also coming together to make one big art print inspired by Alice Adventures in Wonderland. But we're putting a twist on it and calling it Artists in Wonderland. And we're all doing a character and I'm getting Alice. Now we'll be digital, but these were my sketches and I'm just super stoked and excited for that. To finish off the sketchbook, I did 25 expression drawings. My main goal was to loosen up here and really push the shapes, continue to develop my own voice, study all different age groups and smiles, laughter, anger, and get to know my emotions a bit better too. Cause that's really what makes us human, right? And just like that, five months has passed and another sketchbook is complete. I've got to write a poem on this feeling because it's definitely a specific special type of feeling. So many emotions just like those final pages all at once. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this one. Um, I really did. Subscribe and like this video. It really helps support the channel for free. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.